Thank you for the blessing all about the love you know my fans are getting. Every move behind the scenes is working hard to give me more exposure than a camera setting. Bruh. It's bloody cold. It's easy. Well, we already knew that. But you knew that. <laughs> exactly, she knows. What's up now? That he thought, you know what? I might be a good guy. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Um... You know, it's funny, I don't really, really see that about myself, you know, I just kind of get up, put clothes on. But the first time, actually, you know, the funny thing is I grew up believing hand on heart that Mio, ugly kid. In fact, I remember this, I don't know if I can say her full name. Her name is Kike Lomo. Fajemi, I won't say the whole thing just in case she's out there in the world. But like, she told me categorically to my face that, you know, you're ugly. Here just broke my heart you know but at the end of the day i kind of got over it but it was in my mind it's like all right cool you know i wish it'd be nice to be a good looking guy but i guess it, it's fine whatever so i moved on and this one day i'm in secondary school and i can't remember what we were doing but we're in like a we're in the dining hall and i think that maybe they're trying to get nom nominees for you know how they do prim and proper fine, good looking, uh, smartest student, whatever. So they're trying to do the one for good looking. And then somebody just yells out, what about Ladik Boy Ashaw? He's fine. And two things happened. One, I was like, me? <laughs> fine? Yes. Then the other second thing that happened was like complete and utter embarrassment because my name just got yelled and there's like a hundred people about to judge for true, for true, this boy is what they say he is. You know, everybody, as everybody looked to see, you know, what I thought, man, I'd already moved out the hall, ducked out, you know. But uh, it was a moment that I will never forget. But it's all good. We thank God and my mom and dad. Hey, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to make this music. <laughs> I like that story. Yeah. Um, how about your first performance ever? First performance ever. I could tell you about like, you know, when I started making music, when I jumped on stage. But one of my early, early memories, I was in primary school and we had, to, it was like a talent show audition. So um, this really creative teacher, we all loved her, her name was Mrs. Breedy. And um, she had us like performing. And my, my cousin used to play, you know, at home, a lot of old school rap, a lot of hip hop and stuff like that. And one of the songs I really liked at the time was Gangsta's Paradise. You know, he had this record for Coolio. And so that was the song I wanted to perform, you know. And so um, <clears throat> I'd psyched myself if I was going to do it. So I got on stage, I walked through the valley in the shadow of death. Da -da 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 -da. And then like I into the entire performance and I did the whole thing. But as soon as I guess I have a habit of doing this, as soon as I was done, I didn't even wait to see if she liked it or not. I did the thing, I said thank you, I jumped off stage and I ran away. I think obviously they probably thought that maybe I was not trying to do a talent show, I was trying to try it for into house sports or something because I was that fast. But I mean, it, it stuck out to me though because I performed, you know? And now that I look back, you know, it must have stuck with me somehow because now that's what I do, that's what I do for a living. So that's crazy to me. <laughs> I run off stage in a different way now this time. I'm running from the fans chasing me and stuff, but it's crazy to actually think about that. Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise, from young. Yeah, but yeah, that's the first time I ever performed. Okay, um, step away from the music and still be a sense of the fans. Okay, what would you say to the heartbreak? Let's talk about heartbreak. Oh. Heartbroken is a big, that's a big word, first and foremost, that's, that's a big word. Um, let me see. This is one time. It always starts like that. The story always starts like that. This is one time. Uh, this one time I was in college and uh, I went to school in North Carolina, right? And there's not that many African students in the schools. One of few, you know. By the way, I started the first African student organization on campus. Yes, thank you very much. Co-founded it. Anyways. 
um, African student organization on my campus. There was no student union. Anyways, one of the people that joined that organization was this really, really pretty girl from Kenya. Well, her parents are from Kenya. She's practically, she's American for lack of a better phrase. So I, I really fell for this girl hard. You know, but then she, I think she had like a thing with her boyfriend from back in high school. It wasn't done yet and stuff like that. But eventually I worked my way through diligence and persistence like a Nigerian boy would. You know, pole position, I'm there. You know, and we're chilling and everything like that. But then I started to like just, you know, see some things that I don't like. So one day we went to this party and I'm sitting down. I, I see her sitting down with one guy, Yankee boy. Yankee boy, me, Niger boy, and she's sitting next to some Yankee guy. Can you imagine the disrespect? And then um, she's sitting down next to him, and they're really chatting. It's like they're really having a conversation. So me, I sit down next to her. So she's in the middle. I'm here. He's here. And nobody's talking to anybody. I'm like, if we're going to make this uncomfortable, we're really going to make this thing uncomfortable. I mean, but it was so awkward. It was a terrible, terrible moment, terrible party. I remember feeling so bad when we left. You know, we had this argument on the phone. And I found myself turning into an, a full-on American boy because after I was done, I looked at my phone and was like, this bitch, boom, threw my phone on the ground, walked off. I think it was one uh, old friend of mine that came and said, oh, do you still? I was like, please, I beg, please, I can't come back. <laughs> my, my, my tuition, you know what I'm saying? So, like, um, that was crazy to me, you know. We didn't speak for months. And then, you know, we eventually kind of caught up again. And she, she was very smart. She didn't bring it up. As soon as she saw me, she just said, hey, Paul, how's it going? You know, I haven't seen you in a while. Just because she hit me with this upbeat energy, it changed my mood. But I was, heartbroken is a big word, but it hurt. I was embarrassed. I was disappointed. My heart might have been bruised a little bit. It's a tiny bruise. That's that. But yeah, that's, it stands out to me. And uh, she knows who she is. But we're, we're friends. We're friends now. And uh, that was funny, though. Mm. It did, thank God, because you <laughs> came who was going to buy another one from me at that time. Yeah, it was, it was yeah, I smashed my phone. It made me, no, nah, man, wow. Yeah. All right, let's get back to <laughs> Like, I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> Where's my phone, sir? Let me just make sure. Mm -hmm. See. Cocky. Wow. Standard. Standard. Um, all right, let's see. Let's talk about the moment. Well, I guess I was the first because you know I never signed to a label before, and me, yeah, I fashioned myself, and I was in the independent artist life. It was an art is a life that I think suited me, you know, um, self management, being diligent chasing my dream but then you know I got to a point where I felt like you know I, it wasn't just even the frustration of the life it was more like more people need to see this how can I catapult myself to a bigger audience and stage you know so it wasn't that I reached out and said okay I'm going to sign to a label I started to hear rumors that labels were interested you know so um maven being one of them in fact I remember the first day I was on air at a radio station and um, you know during when we're off air in between before we go back on I get a phone call like a persistent phone call they kept calling while I was on air so this time I decided you know let me pick up the phone so I pick up the phone and it's one of my friends who was a maven at the time and she's like look Jazzy wants to sign you how do you get back into whatever the hell you are talking about before you know on air when you hear that because it's not just oh um Maven is interested. They said, Don Jazzy wants to sign. He just said it now. So it was like two things happened. One, my head grew. And then it came back to size because I had to think, you know, is this what I want to do? Because I knew Maven was huge. Maven had a reputation for being a big pop factory, you know, Afro pop. And I knew my style was so different and there was no rapper. So I really had to sit down and think. So it was a lot of emotions. I can't, I don't know how to describe it. It was a lot of emotions, but... I made the decision because I wanted to do something that nobody else had done. I wanted to be the one to change people's perspective of what rap-based music, I won't say hip-hop, 
rap-based music can do in this country, I wanted to be the first person out there carrying the flag, you know, and I wanted to prove that, you know, I made the right decision, you know what I'm saying? So it was interesting times. My fan base was not sure what to think, but I think now I've convinced them once they heard talk about what was the rap. But yeah, it was, it was bittersweet, but more sweet, a lot more sweet. Yeah, amazing. Though. I don't know. And then silence. And then everybody's like, and then everybody they do this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Laddie Poe, Laddie Poe. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I've always seen myself as somebody that is a leader, and I'm back. In fact, more than. The term leader has been abused in this country, so I just say my, I see myself as an ambassador and I thought, you know, to be an ambassador, you need to be on a platform. And I wanted to choose, I chose that as my platform, you know, and I felt, you know, Jazzy and I listened to my music before it came out. It's like, look, we can build something crazy. It took us time, it took us time, but it's slowly coming together. And I think that's all that matters. The journey is, 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 is a necessary part of it. The process is, you know, but uh, success inevitable as I say mm. Mm, for sure. I told my show show like you just got on stage or show show that you got, got I got paid money um I'll tell you two experiences one my first time I got paid for a show because I think that's like your first show when you're getting paid it's different and when you just jump on stage trust me you walk away that your, your step is different. But like, um, shout out to STC, because the first time I got paid was through them, you know? We had done, done a record called Feel All Right. And you have put one hand, make a feel, you know, all of that. It's funny, when my mom heard that the first time, she was so, so sad, so disappointed. But anyways, so we did Feel All Right, and Feel All Right was great for the culture, great for the movement, but it was great for the pocket as well because show them campus, they were getting a lot of gigs. And one day they call me like, oh, we got this performance, you know, can you come through? You know, you say anything else besides that. I'm like, all right, I'm down, I'll come through. So I landed, did the thing, did my verse. You know, Henny is it. I have to give a pause, everybody says it. Henny is it. So I did that, everything was cool. So we're leaving. And then, you know, they're like, yo, what's your account number? I'm like, you know, the two things a man knows quickly. One, his telephone number, two, his account number straight. 00503 da 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 boom hit my account and it was nice so to me that that was my first show and i don't remember where it was though but i know we killed it and um being on stage was amazing but my own show when laddie po took the stage in front of his own fans, it took a while i've been on many stages but my own stage was 20 18, Laddie Poe Live, Kemi Smalls wasn't there and it's a shame because I invited her but she couldn't make it. <laughs> she couldn't make it. <laughs> I'll call next time. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you guys, it's a promise. She's made that promise. We're keeping her, we're making her stick to that. Um, so Laddie Poe Live was 2018 and it was the most special thing I've ever done in my career till date. And I know that we're going to top it this year. Um, it's just having your own fans. I've rocked stages before. I step on stages on other people's shows and or other organized shows and the, the fans know I'm there. But it's different when it's your own show. When you say, you sing I Hear Voices and you sing the lyrics and people are going word for word, word for word, it's a different experience. I can't even tell you what it's like. You have to experience it for yourself. And it just reminds you of what you do it for. So, yeah, Eddie Poe Live 2018, it's crazy. about my firsts. The other first I could tell you about, but you know, that's not really for the camera. <laughs> it's not for the camera. It's off, off camera. Off, keep that off air. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, but yo, you guys, oh, my bad, sorry. That's what I meant to. <laughs> what, what happened there? Sometimes it just doesn't work right, you know, but peace and love. Thank you guys so much. The leader of the revival, you know what it is. Before they won't fit in the wave, they only said no one goodbye. Hi, Kemi Smalls here, and I need you to subscribe to Cool FM Nigeria on YouTube for all the fun and entertainment that you want.